Uh, I think my main struggle was just uh, understanding what I wanted to do. I think for women it's really complicated for us because we have to have families and I had a family while I was playing. So understanding that I had I didn't want to choose and at the time women had to choose either your family or your career. I wanted them both. So that was a struggle for me at that time. Focusing in on being a great basketball player and still a great mom and wife. And I think that has been a struggle for women for ages those two, the devil and the angel, because you feel guilty when you're really great at one in your way, and, or you feel really guilty that you've given up one for the other, and I wanted them both to merge because that's who I was. And the advice I give is just follow your passion. Don't pay attention to what other people tell you is the right or the wrong way. Follow what you know and you love. And I've always followed that, and it's never let me down. I have my family, the same family, and I've had a great career with basketball, and now I'm coaching and doing things like this. And my husband is super supportive, and my kids love me. And so you can have both if it's what you really want to do, and it's your passion. My question is uh, similar to her question. Uh, you have two championships under your belt, and you're a six-time pro star. So for a woman to achieve something that great, it's really commendable. What drives you to do that? I don't know. Crazy? No. <laughs> um, I'm, I, again, it's always a passion. I love basketball. It's given me so much. And to be able to give back and, and be involved, it, it's not like you're working. My kids, only one plays basketball. But sports is such a unifier for us. The places I've been, the people I've met, being here in the Philippines, I would have never thought I'd ever come to the Philippines to be here, to be part of this, except through basketball. And it basically unifies everyone. I've been to countries where no one speaks English in Russia, yet somehow we can all play basketball together. And I think that for me has been the greatest thing that I've learned about basketball is that if it's your passion, it's what you want to do, it all works out. It works out the way it's supposed to. Do so you just ask about the kids? I mean, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, but can you tell us who you grew up watching and what it feels like knowing that now you're in a position to be that kind of a role model? Well, I didn't have the women role models, right. so I grew up watching Dr. J, Moses Malone, the early Celtics. Um, that form of teamwork was always something that I saw all the time on TV. There was no one who looked like me, right. played like me, and even in the era that I grew up, I'm 6'3". I was huge at the time, and uh, I was bullied a lot because of my height, because of the way I looked. So when I, I realized that I have daughters, and I want them to find someone that looks like them that they can emulate, and it doesn't have to be bad. But the WNBA is full of really great role models that I know my daughter, Maya Moore, who I played with. My daughter is named Maya, not because of her, but she's always been such an inspirational person. I know that my daughter can say, I want to be Maya Moore, and I'm not offended. It doesn't bother me. That makes me happy. Or Serena Williams. Or, or whoever it is that they choose to look up to. They're so available now as opposed to when I grew up. So it's a real dichotomy for me now because I don't have women role models from when I was younger. So when people ask me, they're always like, really? And I'm like, no, because there wasn't, social media wasn't around. And on TV, there wasn't any pro league that I know of. And it was only Dr. J, Celtics, in those early days of those amazing people. And that's who I grew up, grew up with. And I emulated them as far as what I saw on the TV. So at home, you're just mom? At home, I'm just mom. I am actually. <laughs> Uh, what do you plan to share with the kids uh, on Friday? Uh, what do you plan to share? What tips do you plan to share with the kids uh, on the on your in the training? Well, definitely, most of the things that I do are fundamental work. A lot of the fundamental things, but also, I, as I said previously, coaching to me is mentoring. So even we're talking about how to dribble, we, we understand the teamwork that is involved in all of basketball, the respect, all of the things that I think basketball entails, sportsmanship, all those things that you bring with your life lessons, and those are the things you pass along. Even if it's just for a moment where we're talking about, oh, let's work on our shooting. How can it help you? How can this be something that can help you along the way? And that's important for me. So I'm on the beach where you have, you have the beach. Where do you have 
What do you find the most memorable moment? What do you have the most memorable moment as a basketball player? Someone asked me that before, and it's, it, it all like it's all memorable. Like, it's like everything. Like, you know, like when I was in college, I given something to the person that I am. Each spot that I've been to, I've taken away something that's made me better than I was when I came here. And I think that's important for basketball um, and for young ladies that you leave the sport better than you found it. So every country, I brought something different that made it memorable for me and infused in who I am and what I am about. And so that's important for me. So it's not just one, it's all of them. And I, who I am encapsulates that whole experience.